The latest update is out, mostly unicorn pack changes, and there's a lot to cover. So we're gonna split it up in three different categories. First one is gonna be just all different pet changes, just individual updates, balance changes, anything relevant there. Two is gonna be different comp changes, so different archetypes varying how well they work. Some just sprouted out of nothing, new archetypes, some old archetypes got absolutely obliterated. A lot to cover there. And then the third one, we're just gonna talk about general miscellaneous, kind of like food changes, certain interactions, all that kind of good stuff. Without further ado, let's jump right in. Now this one I covered in the test server, and it's the exact same change, but I figured I'd point it out anyways. So we have the abomination, instead of targeting only start of battle shops, it targets any pet. So it can get faint triggers, it can get start a battle, of course, and it can get any sort of in battle synergies. The only thing it can't adopt is end of turn, since it already applies at the end of turn. But I think this is a cool change. I think there's gonna be a lot more synergies here. You're gonna feel like you can actually do stuff with them, and it can be a lot more focused on getting some good faint and start a battle and all sort of synergies here. Next up we have the Amalgamation. Now this guy I think is going to be an integral pivot pet when we're in the new Unicorn pack. So what he does is he gives 4-4 to whatever pet you summon and gives it Spook, but only works two times per turn. So as I see this pet working, you're basically going to have the likes of a turkey, but you're not going to primarily use him for in-battle scaling. You can, but it's not necessarily going to be the best way to use it. I think it's going to be a huge pivot turn pet where you get a level 3, and then any pet you summon, you give 12, 12 to. And let's say you have a unicorn on your team too. That's an additional two, two. You get rid of the spooked ailment. If you don't have a unicorn, just give them some other held food, overwrite the spooked, and you're good to go. But I think this is gonna be a fantastic pivot pet. Should be very interesting. I'm, I'm curious whether or not it's actually used or not, but I'm looking forward to it. I'm going kind of along with the bush changes. We have the Baku. Now, Baku, is nerfed compared to the test server, but only replaces ailments on up to two friends with ailments, though, I don't know, it's okay. It's still better than the original Baku, but I don't know if I love it. It it doesn't feel as good as it did on the test server with the old question mark homie. It's just, I think you would rather just wait for the unicorn. I don't think it's worth building into a Baku. The first one we wanna take a look at here is the question mark homie. Some call him George, but he's a bush, okay? Now, on the test server, I made a video about this guy, and he was super strong, perhaps a little too strong, so they did tone it down a little bit. Right now, as it's in the game, he's at tier 1, 3, 2, and his ability is at the end of the turn, he gives one attack and spooked until the next turn to the nearest friend ahead. And this just scales up the attack as he levels up. On the test server, it used to give more friends spooked, which was a little too good, it was a little too strong perhaps, but it felt really good. Either way, right now, it just gives attack and spook, so it's really good to use on a glass cannon kind of unit where, you know, they only have one or two health anyways, so you're looking to make sure they can trade into something good, even if they're going to take some more damage. This one isn't a super insane change, but Chupacabra triggers less times, which really, it, all it's doing is targeting the Chupacabra Hippocampus, where you would knock out somebody and give 9-9 nine nine to, <laughs> to your pets behind. Now this has to be one of the most sad changes that I've seen out of this whole batch is my boy Shrimp. Now Shrimp got absolutely cooked. Teamwood, I don't know why you had to do my boy like this, but he only works two times per turn. So it's basically useless. You know, you're only getting at level one, two health on a random enemy if you happen to sell two guys. So you can't build him in just like a full on buy sell team. In which case, why would you ever build him at all? I think this Jersey Devil change is fantastic. Now, I don't know if there's a better way that they could have approached it, but the way they chose to do it is they go from tier five to a tier six. Now, that doesn't seem like a huge change, but when you're talking about getting all five triggers before you even get to tier five, it is a huge slowdown on this kind of archetype. You're not gonna go absolutely insane with Jersey Devil. You're not gonna get level three nearly as quickly. So I think it's a really solid way to address Jersey Devil being a little bit too consistent, a little too oppressive in custom packs. So we'll see how much it actually does, but I think it's a solid change, at least to start. Now, almost as bad as the shrimp change, we have the giraffe. 
Now, I don't know why Team Wood felt like they had to do this to my boy Giraffe, but he got absolutely sauced. It was, instead of end turn, it's start of turn scaling. So you play the Giraffe, it does absolutely nothing the first turn it's played, and then at the start of the turn, it buffs the two homies in front. So, or the one homie in front. I don't get it. I, I really don't. Giraffe was not that strong to start with, and now he's just even weaker. I don't see anybody picking Giraffe, unless that's like literally your only option. Now this change I think is one of the best changes I've seen, the best nerfs I should say. So Kraken, instead of start of battle removing 20%, we're on faint removing 15%. Now I don't know if they even had to reduce the amount of health depletion with it being a faint trigger now, because the real big concern we had was start of battle, it would trigger and then you would just snipe the hell out of everybody and then you just insta kill their team regardless of how big they were. So I don't know if we really care about the percentage anymore since you're not going to be able to combo with snipes anyways, but I think it's a fair enough change. 15 instead of 20, maxing out at 45 instead of 60. We're not going to see the insane snipe krakens anymore, which is very nice to hear. I've already made a video about the new Leviathan, go check it out if you haven't seen it already. But, I will just say, there's a ton of synergies that this Leviathan enables, largely level up synergies, but also just selling level 3s for the Jersey Devil, or the Starfish. There's a lot of ways that you can make this work now, and I'm very excited to see what else I have not been thinking of that this is going to enable. I wasn't originally planning to talk about the old mouse, but I thought I should highlight how big of a change having this activate on the start of turn versus end of turn is. Now, what it's doing here, of course, when you first buy it, you won't have it on that round. However, with it being on start of turn, you, can, you have the entire turn when you start out with the toy to build toward it. So if you, if you need to get some sort of jump homie on your team, you have 10 gold to do it, you know? So you, you have a more say in how you approach the, the specific toy. And I think it's a fantastic change. So it's not just like, did I get lucky getting a toy that fits my team right now? is more of, can I build my team to fit whatever toy I get at the start of each turn? I wasn't going to address the pen gobble necessarily, but since I made a video on how insanely broken he was on the test server, I think I need to do a revisit here. They've toned it down, it's a completely normal pet, still very good, but it's a capped works three times per turn kind of ability. So right now, he just gains bonus mana whenever he gains mana. So it, it works well as a kind of early game, maybe a little bit late game kind of vibe. It can gain 9 mana at level 3, but you're not going to have any insane crazy, you know, rock plays where it triggers 9 times or something. So it's good, but definitely not as broken as it used to be on the test server. This guy I am super excited for. Picture the Great One dealing 6 damage to all their pets on summon, but smaller. He only deals 2 damage to all their pets on summon but it doubles against enemies. So I think that where I see this guy working the best is in a, either a hurt build, where you know you have a ton of hurt pets, you get this guy to level three, give him a mushroom, he deals two damage three times to all of your pets, and then you just go insane. Also, you could potentially turn this into some sort of big summon counter if you can get a pet that can make him deal more damage. You can give him some sort of like seagull pineapple or something, you know what I'm saying, and you can, Get, do basically four, eight damage three times to the enemy, that's going to stack up pretty significantly. So I think there could be some very interesting enemy team wipe kind of combos with this guy. I'm very curious to see what we can pull off here. They made the Wolverine a little bit better. Two to three health is actually quite significant. It's a 50% bonus. So maybe it's going to be enough to make this guy actually useful. He was not good at all prior to this buff. So we're going to have to check it out, try out this new pet here. I haven't made a video on him yet, so it'll come. We'll see. We'll try it out. Now the yak change I'm actually very happy about. What they did is they changed it from just kind of slowly gains a little bit of attack kind of thing to really going all in on the all attack, no health kind of play. So. But you can really just leave him to gain attack on its own just from the ability and just focus on keeping his health up. And it's a valid way to scale it now because he gets on a level 3 6 attack at the end of each turn. You just got to supplement the 3 damage he's taking and you're good to go. I think this is a really good change. 
makes the yak more of a more of a useful pick. You got to be very diligent when you pick him. You got to know that you can keep him alive, but the payoff is there. And the Jerboa got absolutely destroyed. I don't know why he even exists anymore. If he's only going to trigger one time per turn to give friends plus one plus one, I mean, what's what's the angle here? You're not going to be scaling just with a Jerboa. Now, granted, you could have an owl Jerboa combo and you just kind of you throw it in there as a passive scaler, but it's not going to be your go to. You're not going to build around him anymore. He's going to be kind of a supplementary at best. Which maybe that's what they're going for. Maybe they they didn't like the Jerboa scaling your entire team on its own. Now let's just talk about the jump builds as just a whole archetype here. They changed a bunch of guys. They nerfed a lot of them. Tasselworm is much weaker, but it is also tier 3 instead of tier 4. They also changed the Jackalope, which I think is actually a pretty good change. It's like a mini frog, but only temporary. Mini Loveland frog. So... I think the jump build is going to be less of a late game threat and more of a early to mid game and then you can maybe pivot out of it. I don't foresee many people going for the insane frogman builds going into ultra late game, but maybe. Maybe it's still good. We'll have to see. Another one of the build archetypes that they completely overhauled here was the roll builds. Now Ouroboros is part of the roll synergies here, kind of adjacent to it I would say, but they buffed him significantly, so now he gets plus one attack and plus one health for every roll, up to seven rolls, um, on new shop pets, so, I don't know, I think it's gonna be pretty useful, it'll be a nice, like, pivot kind of ability, helps you stay alive until later rounds, um, but this is gonna be a common theme here, all of these roll synergy guys are gonna be capped, which I think it makes sense, because they're worried that you're just gonna have with the Yeti update here being four rolls instead of three rolls, you're gonna have a lot more hamster synergies here. They don't wanna go too insane. Same with the sandworm here. You know, you don't wanna get the sandworm to scale 500, 500 every turn. Not that it would be that high, but I wish I could have tried out this sandworm with no limit, but unfortunately, <laughs> we cannot have that kind of luck. But one of the big team comps that they're trying to tackle in this update here is the level ups. So originally in the in the old unicorn pack level ups were insane. They scaled down everything a little bit. So they're targeting team spirit, they're targeting Mermel, they're trying to get rid of this whole like in battle everyone levels up and you just have this ginormous team going and there's like huge tanks. But now Mermel only gains attack instead of health and attack which is just the most painful gut to the pet. I don't think he's going to be used at all. It's really not a great pet anymore to build into. But they did upgrade the Lucky Cat here, which I'm very happy about. I think the Lucky Cat change was much needed. It didn't feel really worth it with the old Lucky Cat. It was basically just a swan. So I think this change is going to be fantastic. Now these two homies, I think, are going to be a menace. Dude, the Tang Nos and Tang Grisners are effectively faster scaling than anybody else in the entire game any other shop scalers but they only scale each other so if you can get a tang nost get them to level three give them a few waffles maybe even a catfish you can get 50 50 tang grisners in the shop within i don't know two three turns like it's insanely fast scaling you just got to get lucky and actually find the tang grisners afterwards but honestly dude this these two are going to be a menace if you can get that build going. So these pets we're going to see a lot of. Um, they, they're trying a different style of balancing in this update where you have a base ability and then you also have a scaling ability with usually mana. And so the Chimera we see here we have it summons a 3-3 pet and then it also gains plus 1 plus 2 per 2 mana. So it is a nerf, but it's kind of a different twist on, on the old Chimera because it still summons, even if he has no mana, it's still a summon pet, right? So it's not a completely useless pet if you don't have any mana in the pack, which I think is a good change. We also see that with Nessie. They did that with Nessie here and then also Gargoyle. So you have a base ability. You don't have to have mana for the pet to be useful, but it is still benefited by the mana. 
Okay, so Kitsune is another one of those interesting keyword additions here. So now we have unspendable. So Kitsune is going to transfer all unspendable friendly mana plus two to the nearest friend ahead. And you might be wondering what exactly is that going to be useful for? Well, picture picks you, right? Picks you, you can actually have in front of the Kitsune. You can have the rock throw two triggers onto the on the Pixu here, and the Kitsune is going to only pull however much mana it has minus four off of it. So you still guarantee get the faint ability here without it getting stolen by the Kitsune. But I think it's a they were really focusing on getting consistency and evening out the power level of these mana builds, which I think is a fantastic change. I wanted to point out here the Mandrake text because it's the first time that I can think of where the text talks about prioritizing. Now this is an entirely new feature in an ability where it targets a quote random pet, but it'll prioritize a pet of a certain type. So it's a little bit of an interesting twist. I want, I'm curious what kind of situations that we might see a similar wording on future pets. But I just thought I'd point it out here that we now have prioritizing abilities where if there is a faint pet, it'll go for a faint pet. If not, it just throws it on somebody. Now I had a glimpse, it looks like the ghost kitten wasn't changed a whole lot, just turning a 3-3 into a 3-4. However, they reworked the whole way that ability interactions work with each other. So ghost kitten actually blocks way more than it originally did. So any held foods, it'll block. Still any ability snipes it'll block, any mana snipes it'll block, so it's going to be much more useful. I think it'll be a fantastic change, make him a little more relevant, and you can give him a blueberry now and it's just, you know, you have an actual snipe absorber instead of just only if there was the perfect just random snipe, the usefulness is there, which I'm happy about. So we're just going to kind of rapid fire off a few of the different perk food changes that they've implemented. So the Ambrosia is new. It has a block ailment or eight damage once ability. We have a big mana potion, which used to be the old mana potion, but now the old mana potion is the little mana potion on tier one. And the big mana potion is the old mana potion. So that's on tier five still, six mana. The golden egg is no longer has a cell value tied to the egg. Instead of the magic beans give the cell value straight to the pet. And that just stops you from abusing it in a seagull kind of buy cell build. The Holy Water now gives 4-4 instead of 8 health. So I think that's going to be a much more balanced change, much more useful than just throwing 8 health on a homie. Um, Love Potion, I think this is a much needed change. Instead of just some arbitrary give somebody a couple of health points, now it turns the pet in front of you into yourself. It's a 3-3 pet that has the same abilities. I think it's a level 1, but I'm not sure exactly. Uh, so it's going to be potentially a lot more useful. It's, it's got to be more useful than <laughs> whatever it used to be. Uh, Water of Youth is now tier 2 instead of tier 1, which honestly I think is a buff just to the game in general, because nobody wants to play Water of Youth on tier 1 anyways. It was just kind of there. It was a waste of a spot for the most part. And the Yggdrasil Fruit now summons 5-5s five instead of 3-3s, three but it's tier 6 to balance it out. And Cornucopia biggest change of them all instead of all packs it's all packs and that'll wrap it up for all of our unicorn pack changes i hope you enjoyed i thought it'd be good to kind of give initial thoughts on different ways that things are changing make sure we don't lose anything in all of the the turnover as the new updates are, are passing so if you like super auto pets content you want to see some more drop a sub drop a like let me know there's plenty more to come for now Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next one. Have a good one.